Tomba Revenge. Chapter 16.5 Harry's Confession. Hello, welcome back to Tom Bailey's book Revenge and also explaining more of what goes on visa feed the world of narcissism. Harry first disclosed his mental anguish at the Heads Together event in Kensington Palace on the 25th of July 2016. Anyone he told the audience can suffer from mental health problems, even a member of the royal family to encourage others to speak about their mental health. The young royal appeared at ease with himself and his role, a confident, charming, increasingly gracious man, relaxed in the knowledge that the public was on his side. His talent was to make people feel he was one of them a connection emotional empathy, praised by many for his courage and honesty. Few realized in 2016 that the apparently fund prince had sought psychiatric help. He had taken up boxing to control his aggression. Harry struck a chord. The public sympathy increased. Harry's wife added a twist, encouraged by Harry's wife that his old British stiff upper lip should be replaced by honest confession. Harry offered himself to Brian E. Gordon, a British journalist at the Daily Telegraph as a haunted victim addressing the catastrophic impact of Diana's death on his life. Ignoring Gates' concern, he laid bare his total chaos since 2012 to a woman who confessed to having also suffered from personal problems, alcoholism, depression, and drug addiction. I just didn't know what was wrong with me. He told Gordon I had probably been very close to a complete breakdown on numerous occasions. He thanked William for urging him to seek psychiatric help. William again exhibiting his emotional empathy for his brother life had become better. Once I offloaded my stuff to somebody else. The analysis he revealed was unsurprising, losing my moment the age of 12 and therefore shutting down all of my emotions for the last 20 years has had quite a serious effect on not only my personal life but my work as well. My way of dealing with it was sticking my head in the sand, refusing ever to think about my mum because why would that help? It's only going to make you sad. Working for Invictus and meeting injured soldiers had helped park his own issues to listen to others. They loved him for listening to their problems. He added later, keeping quiet, was only ever going to make it worse. Speaking about his personal problems have become a priority. Harry's promise of future confessions, alarm gate, the potential damage the senior official decided required a plan of action. He acted on the widespread assumption that he would remain in office until the Queen died. To reassert the Queen's unquestioned authority. Gates summoned all 500. The royal staff from across Britain to a meeting in Buckingham Palace on 4 May. The pretext was the anticipated last official engagement of 96-year-old Prince Philip. His 22,219 in August Gate told his audience that Philip's requirement was an opportunity to pause, reflect and refocus on the family. The discordant relations amongst the royals and their self-indulgence he implied had to end everyone should work to serve the Queen. All the palaces would be subject to Buckingham Palace's overriding veto coordinating the courts of Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace and Clown's House had been an unfulfilled ambition of his for years, the reaction from two princes to Gates' initiative was hostile. His well-meaning attempt backfired out of self-interest because of course it was a threat to both their notions of control. Charles and Andrew were united and outrage ignited fury. Neither saw Gate as an ally. Both asked the Queen to dismiss her private secretary. Their mother was too weak to resist. Gate's demise coincided with his suspicions about Harry's wife's influence on Harry therefore would appear that somebody who perhaps might have provided better guidance had been taken off the board. As a consequence, ironically, of the behavior of two other narcissists. Even Gate had not anticipated Harry's self-destructive confession to Angela Eleven for Newsweek magazine the following month, Is there anyone of the royal family? Harry asked the journalist who wants to be king or queen. I don't think so, but we will carry out our duties at the right time. Speaking for William and himself, he placed the brothers together on one pedestal. We are involved in modernizing the British monarchy. We are not doing this for ourselves but for the greater good of the people. That was a surprise for those who criticized the work, Shy Brothers fulfilling just a fraction of the engagement with other royals, including their grandparents. 
Even more flippant was Harry's warning that an ordinary royal family would take away the firm's mystery. It's a tricky balancing act. He pontificated, we don't want to dilute the magic, the British public and the whole world need institutions like it. There was a novelty in Harry as a constitutional expert suggesting that he and William would decide the monarchy's fate. We want to make sure the monarchy lasts and are passionate about what it stands for, he has said, but it can't go on as it has done under the Queen. There will be changes and pressure to get them right. He suggested the Queen endorsed their right to decide the future. The Queen tells us to take our time. He said the monarchy is a force for good and we want to carry on the positive atmosphere the Queen has achieved for over 60 years, but we won't be trying to fill her boots. Harry then became introspective. I sometimes still feel I'm living in a goldfish bowl, but I now manage it better. I'm now fired up and energized and love charity stuff, meeting people and making them laugh after saying that he should have not have been asked to walk behind his mother's coffin, no child should be asked to do that. He confessed about his later life. I was like oh my god, get me out of here now Harry then turned to his most significant revelation, highlighting that his role of the spare had disappeared. He admitted, I feel there is just a smallish window when people are interested in me before William's children, Prince George and Princess Charlotte take over and I've got to make the most of it. Anticipating insignificance. He repeated his hope that he would make something of his life or he would consider turning his back on privilege because he wanted out of the royal family to live an ordinary life. No prize is for guessing who's been whispering in that ear. This was a new Harry liberated of a sense of course by Harry's wife. He was willfully careless of the consequences of his truth. Even his praise for the Crown Netflix is hugely popular fictionalized drama about his grandmother in the House of Winner Windsor broke the party line about the service's systematic fabrication. It's great, but I wish they'd stopped at the end of the first series. Harry said they absolutely must not move on to the younger generation. This was the same Harry who demanded privacy and who said I believe a leopard can't change its spots. The Newsweek interview was praised as honest and heartfelt and few openly questioned Harry's wisdom. His confession was a curtain raiser to the brothers' TV documentary, Diana, Our Mother introduced by William the heir explained that 20 years after her death many did not know the real person. Viewers witnessed the brothers' emotion, grief and anger, especially towards Charles. Despite ferocious arguments between father and son, William refused to mention Charles in the film. The brothers, the brothers blamed Charles and Camilla for their beloved mother's misery and death. Christopher Gates. Worst fears had materialized. The divisions between the three palaces were irreconcilable Charles and Camilla's popularity ratings fell sharply and Charles hoped that William and Harry would agree to support Camilla as the future queen was again uncertain amid the unrest. Gate departed on 31 June 2017, the loyal official was followed by the resignation of Samantha Cohen, an Australian-born assistant private secretary who had served in the palace for nearly 20 years, turmoil at the palaces, Queen's right-hand man to quit was the headline, anticipating Mayhem Gate's successor Edward Young, his portly deputy was not as highly rated at the outset, Young made a fundamental error instead of insisting that in the interest of the monarchy's well-being. Gate's plans for coordination between the palaces was a non-negotiable condition for him accepting the post. He allowed the princess to take control. Thereafter, Young lacked the authority to influence the media strategy and the other palaces amid those seismic changes, no outsider in London had yet grasped the importance of Harry's wife's influence for most. She remained invisible, but in New York Jane Suck in Vanity Fair's Features Editor, probably properly understood the Californian's ambitions and thus ends Chapter 16 and poised with 17 on the horizon, entitled Vanity Fair We Leave Matters that concludes today's videos. I'm H.D. Tudor. Thank you for listening, I'm H.D. Tudor.